this is an interesting topic to talk about, right? Mm. As you're aware, there's a lot of hoopla within the dance music scene concerning DJs playing during these complicated times that we're living in, aka COVID times, right? They've now been dubbed the plague raves, but there's been a, a conversation, a wide ranging conversation around what this kind of represents, right? Where some of the more higher ranking DJs, some of the DJs that kind of occupy the higher echelons of the um, DJing success and, you know, frequencies of gigs and all that good stuff. They're the ones who are now going around, gallivanting around the globe, playing to sold out crowds of maybe max 500 people in countries that are deemed safe and maybe COVID free. And they've now been referred to quite mockingly as the business techno group. And for the most part, I don't really have a problem with some of the stick and the and the kind of barbs they've been getting because I'm of the thinking, again, this is my personal opinion coming from somebody that's a really novice, middle of the road DJ who kind of only plays in local bars and clubs, who's obsessed with nightlife. And, you know, I've kind of, I've been to the Bergheim more times than I can kind of count or remember. Um, I'm a staunch believer in the beauty and the magic of nightlife right some of the my best experiences in life have come after 9 p.m for the most part so i'm in love with that scene and i'm missing raving more than anything in the world but i've kind of been a firm believer from the very onset that everyone is sort of we all have the information to hand now to make very informed rational adult decisions as to how we approach um life and how we maneuver and go around doing stuff with covid in the air right um vaccines and cures aren't going to be around until maybe the new year so we have to kind of rationalize how we're going to go about navigating living our everyday lives knowing that this virus exists around us and one of the things i've chosen not to do is to dj anywhere of course i'm not being offered any gigs don't get me wrong and i've also decided not to go to any parties that's my personal decision but i'm also really annoyed when people who decide to do those two things then get annoyed when people call them out and say stuff because i think you should be aware enough especially with the current climate especially you should be more um compassionate of people's feelings because every, not not myself because i could give a shit you know it is what it is we're living in this weird situation i just kind of try and carry on but i can understand some people who have generally not gone through any kind of turmoil any struggle in their lives at whatsoever especially any struggle that wasn't their own making to so somehow be put in a situation where they've lost any kind of process of making any money all the future all the gigs that they were going to do at the time especially between the months of like march and april that were probably a bit lucrative concerning especially that was during like the peak or the uh, the start of kind of festival season i'm sure a lot of those people have seen their bank accounts or their savings completely diminish over that time so to see somebody who they deem to be a peer or somebody who they deem to be a little bit more financially safe go and do these smaller gigs especially when the original argument was that um or the optimistic point of view that we had in the scene was that oh now that covid is around and there's going to be restricted travel there's going to be an onus on local promoters to book local djs i said that as well on this podcast i thought that was going to be a thing it's going to be a great to see um um, a clubbing landscape that maybe reflected its geography as opposed to going to every random town that you go to you're going to see a bloody you know top 10 dj playing it's, it gets a bit boring i like to hear what the scene and what the sound is of that area um via the lens of the people that actually live and work within that actual city that's what we thought was going to happen but unfortunately that hasn't been that hasn't transpired what's actually transpired is that because covid is around in the air and promoters have lost loads of money they don't want to take any risks so the moment they get a chance to put on an event they're going to want to book somebody that's going to guarantee selling them tickets and unfortunately because of the cyclical nature where every gig every festival they usually book the same 10 to 20 people when things go down and the economy is hurting and you need to guarantee ticket sales you're going to do what book the same 10 20 people so if anything these djs are uh, gallivanting around are emblematic of the situation at hand they kind of represent the um i wouldn't say unfairness but the the just the it doesn't make any sense in it in some regard that's what maybe you could say in sense because in my opinion again it's just my opinion right because as being a dj myself dj more than 10 years i generally think that there's no real difference between 
the DJing skills, again, not get me wrong about ticket sales, ticket sales. I don't think there's any much different between the DJing skills of people that are at the top and people at the middle. Of course, the entry level people, the people like myself, I'm sure if I played back to back with a flipping Chris Liebling, you'd be able to tell when Chris is playing for sure. But I think the middle of the tier people and the upper tier, they're, they're the same. They're two and the same. But the disparity in pay, the disparity in gigs is wide even between those people so i can only imagine what it must be for the people from the bottom to the middle so when they see these guys gallivanting around it's definitely going to bring up some frustrating feelings right and thinking you know what i'm i really need these gigs i should be getting those gigs and i'm not getting them and you don't need them even though you shouldn't count someone's pocket and you don't know what they're going through it just really stinks and it and kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth and the funny thing is about this video I'm about to show you via this uh, show called DJs and the Beers that Chris Liebling does with a few of his friends in the scene is that Chris Liebling says in the beginning that he feels comfortable in the fact that he's able to go out and do these gigs. He looks himself in the mirror and he's okay with decision making. But he's very defensive of this entire podcast concerning anything um concerning the naysayers and the criticisms or the haters online especially that business techno page on twitter he really has a beanie's bonnet about them calling him out and that's the issue at hand i think if you're willing to take the gig you have to be willing to take the criticism now it's not it's not up to it's up to you whether you respond or not but you can't dissuade people from criticism because again i don't i'm not criticizing him i could give a shit right it's not my issue go play many gigs as you want spread the virus do what you want to do. If anything, it's probably going to hurt us in the long run, right? Club's probably not going to open again, maybe for another year, maybe until the beginning of next year, I think, in that regard, depending on what country you're in. But if you want to take them, take them. But you can't then turn around and get angry and people try and call you out on it because you know where the frustration is coming from. You can't be that obtuse. It doesn't make any sense. And let me play a little, little clip from you regarding some of Chris Lieben's comments that really just doesn't make any sense. Again, for somebody that's um, supposedly comfortable with his decision and okay to look himself in the mirror, he seems oddly, oddly, oddly defensive. Let's play. Actually, I told him that. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Benny, you, you true, also... True story. story. Wait, wait, yeah, guys, I have to stop you here. I'm sorry, but I, I have to be the party pooper. I need to get back to the pandemic DJ thing for one more time. <laughs> we, we, we can, yes, we what about you? <laughs> Guys, I, I, haven't, I haven't voiced my opinion yet, and I need to. Um, I have played three gigs so far in this pandemic. And honestly, I can look in the mirror and I would play them right away again. So what are my circumstances under which I, uh, I accept the booking? Um, I told myself it needs to be... Um, under like the least amount of restrictions possible, right? So I've, I've refused to pay parties where they say like, it's an, uh, a, a movie theater with four cars. So honorable, right? That's a really honorable stance to take. I'm not gonna do them with cars playing. It's like, come on, geezer. You know, or people have to sit down or people have only their circle they can dance in. There is an argument that that's probably a lot safer than the gig that he's played that. There is an argument to be had about that as well. Because this will not work. It will not be a good party. It will not be a good experience. I don't want to be part of that. No matter no matter what what the price, no matter what. It's, it's just like, I didn't want to do this. Oh, so tell, tell, his, eyes, tell, are, I, his I, eyes are dying around no matter the price of the money. Yeah, right, mate. Again, it's not bad thing. Earn your money, do your thing. No one... No one's under any sort of illusion that Chris Lieberman doesn't make good money playing, right? He's a big DJ. Like, I, when did I go? I saw him last at some Shoreditch car park years ago, maybe in the early 2000s. I forgot what that car park thing was. Maybe that, maybe last time I've seen him. He's obviously, you know, he does well what he's doing, and I'm sure he makes a good living. But to suggest that it's not about the money is really, really nuts. I told myself I'm going to accept parties, uh, offers, where I, A, know the promoter who's doing a good job, um i which is a bit of a mute point because you're obviously gonna know the promoter right people at his level aren't gonna be working with just any tom dick and harry so that's a bit of a redundant point certain countries where you can uh, trust the numbers of the government that's also ridiculous because what do you trust the numbers of russia do you trust the numbers of brazil do you trust their numbers <laughs> like do you trust the numbers of hungary like that's just nuts like of course like this suggestion that some again I'm not, I don't care. Go do your gigs. It's just really interesting how somehow the people that are pro opening everything up and going back to normal are just so devoid of any kind of foresight, insight, acknowledgement of the actual wider issues that are at hand. Is he not aware that there are certain governments out there that are purposely fobbing the numbers, 
right? Purposely misleading the public with holdings. Even Brazil, I'm su I'm sure. Didn't I read a story? Or is it Brazil or some? It, it's even Brazil or maybe it's a state in America. It might be Florida where they're purposely um, withholding the numbers of coronavirus cases. Even in the US recently, they've now changed how they categorize cases of COVID where they're now instructing people to only take a test if you feel ill. So they're not going to be able to catch asymptomatic people who they think is going to boost the numbers or so it's going to make help to kind of decrease the numbers somewhat so to somehow um put all your to somehow kind of push responsibility away from you and place it all in the hands of the country you're going to and say hey they said it's safe so it's okay is demonstrably 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 irresponsible because you don't know what's actually going on, especially when you hear stories on the ground from actual journalists who are telling you that, no, it's actually fucked up the situation here and the government are trying to restart the economy, of course, to benefit themselves and to line their pockets. It's not to help anybody else, but the people that are actually putting on the events themselves. So to suggest somehow that the numbers from the government are always going to be legit is absolutely crazy. When it comes to infections rates, where are the infection rates? Obviously, it needs to be legal. So uh, I played two of those three gigs were in Switzerland. And in hindsight, these were amazing gigs. They were restricted only of the amount of people that were allowed to come. Um, but otherwise, everything was traced back. So if in case if there had been an infection, which there wasn't, it could have been traced back. This is why I think that illegal parties during the pandemic is the most idiotic thing. But do you think he's purposely being a little bit obtuse about this issue? Because no one's complaining, I don't think, about the parties in Zurich. We know the numbers in Switzerland have been pretty well, have been pretty good. It's the same way if they decided to go on a... If, they just, if there was a popular club in New Zealand that people could get to easily and everyone decided to go there, no one would have a problem because we're all aware that New Zealand have probably crushed the virus better than anybody, right? Same, with, same could be said for places like Vietnam and I'm sure there's other places too that have handled it pretty well. That's not the issue. The issue is that for the most part, what we've seen is that there's people that are purposely going to areas which have had which have been affected by COVID in the worst way, places like Italy and other sorts of and even Malta, where you could argue that the government is purposely misleading the public as to what the numbers are in the hope of re uh, in the hope of opening up the borders, in the hope of restarting the economy, welcoming back tourists so they can restart the economy. But is it safe? Is it the first thing that needs to be opened up? Is that a crucial part of the economy of that country? Is that one of the industries that really needs to kickstart in order to get people's lives back and running? We don't know. In my opinion, I think it's a bit of a luxury. Going out, having a good time is a right of anybody else's. But to go and see a high-flying DJ play somewhere isn't a requirement for anybody, right? You're, you isn't one of those fundamental needs that you must have to go and see Chris Liebing. And again, this is part of the issue. Again, I have of it. It's odd. It's the same 10, 20 people that play at all these festivals that are going to go play. It's not even like you're breaking your quarantine to go and see somebody amazing. You're going to go see somebody that's going to be in your country at like maybe six or seven times, especially if you live in a fairly popular European country, right? Tourism wise, you're definitely going to see him again. It's not the first time you're going to see him. And maybe, again, and Zurich is a good example, is a bad example because, you know, seeing somebody like Chris Liebing in the 300 capacity club is probably a bit of a special occasion. But for the most part, it's like, come on, man. Thing to do, right? Um, I played one gig in Rome, which was perfectly t fine at the time as they did the gig. Ah, at the time they did the gig, huh? Hmm. Terrors, um, it was restricted on the amount of people. Um, and it was perfectly fine to play there. No, so me, again, you see his eyes always dart around when he's lying. Were the people wearing masks? Did you feel safe when you were there? No. I was able and if you remember in the beginning, you said in hindsight, the, those two kicks in Zurich were the best, but the Rome one, he's sure that wasn't a good idea to go to. Like, okay, if, 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 if it's like this, I can, I'm, I'm happy. The flying experience was not a nice experience, but I'm happy to play these gigs because out of various reasons because a, a i think we need to start to play some gig, or, or let's say i'm feeling like i want to start to play some gigs where it's somewhat safe because life needs to go on in in certain safe areas where the infection rates are low which is perfectly fine in switzerland which life does need to go on but there's a rule there's again it's really strange like, maybe it's just me but am i the only person that doesn't just i love djing i love dance music but i listen to everything right I'm into indie, I'm into hip hop, I'm into metal, I'm into punk music, right? Um, I've not seen any of these ghost guys put on shows. There's not been one um, underground DIY metal show I've seen of a, one of the bands that I like to follow. I've not seen one. I've not seen one indie person play a gig somewhere randomly and just do a pop-up show. It's just these guys. 
that are kind of, you know, tying themselves in knots as to why they should go and play somewhere. Again, if you want to go play, go and play. But don't expect people to accept and be happy that you're playing and cheer you on. Some people are going to be a bit pissed off about it, but it's okay. Go and play. Be happy with the decision. But they're trying to convince us that they're doing nothing wrong or that we shouldn't view it as wrong. Not us. People that don't like what they're doing. And it's like, it's a very interesting thing. And again, this is the guy that said he's happy looking himself in the mirror. And you do it again. He's really, really defensive. Which we can see. Um, the funny thing is with all the DJs that are criticizing other DJs right now who are playing somewhere, I'm actually agreeing with them, like on most topics. I the only thing I don't agree on is why do you uh, uh, paint it with such a broad brush, you know? It's like, if it's, not, if it's not possible to play a gig in the USA, why do you play a gig in Switzerland? Well, because it's completely different. They had a completely different approach towards the I don't, virus. I don't think anyone's saying that, though. Let's just be honest. I don't think anyone's saying that whatsoever. I just think people are saying it's irresponsible to be flying around. Again, if you live in America and you're going to go play a gig in Zurich, <coughs> that's not an essential travel. If you're landlocked in Germany, wherever he is, and you're going to go play in Zurich, fair enough. But let's not be under any illusions. Like Going to fly halfway around the world to go and play a gig somewhere in order to get the economy back up and running again is... It's just like, I don't know, man. You, 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 you're, you're trying to convince yourself, but we know that's not the fact. They did a whole better job. Uh, and uh, it is somewhat safe to play, to, to play a gig. I don't, I, I, I don't really like the way how things are being generalized in, in a way, you know? I, like, think, I, I don't, think I basically saying I don't like the way I'm being judged. I don't like the way people are calling me out on playing the gig when it's not the issue. Go and play your gig. Enjoy yourself, man. Play, this, play your set. Do your thing in it and go back home and, you know, be happy that you've made a bit of money during these hard times but to somehow suggest there's anything but that is bizarre it's really bizarre really really odd it's because a lot of these people like to control the net they like to dictate the narrative and control the narrative yeah well i think yeah, that gives, if... gives them a feeling of empowerment it's like i i want to control by what i say I mean, uh, you know where I... you where this guy's talking out of his ass mate dubfire i love you mate you make some good tunes don't get me wrong but come on relax again I I'm all for people going to play gigs. Do what you want to do. I don't want to go out anywhere, but do what you want to do. But to suggest that people are trying to control a narrative is nuts. If anything, the DJs going to playing are trying to control a narrative by putting out certain pieces of information, being purposely obtuse. And, and you know what's funny about this issue? You know what the actual issue is? is you know what's actually been happening? That actually makes it really funny. If the DJ, if DJs want so, especially these kind of top ten, top twenty mix, not mix mag, but these kind of like business techno guys, if they want so obsessed with their image and putting everything on social media and constructing this 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 idea of this impression that they're bigger than what they are or whatever it may be, right? They're all about how it looks on Instagram and getting likes and all that stuff, malarkey. If they want so obsessed with it, it wouldn't be such an issue because these same people that document their entire tour and they put up all their dates and they show off and where they're going to go play, they're now getting bitten in the ass because they're unable to go and play somewhere especially when they haven't played in four months and not post it so they're just making a rod from their own back if they could just go and play not say a word and just do their thing and keep it moving no one would care yes you would see some images from people that upload videos and stuff but it wouldn't be that much of an issue but because they're so desperate to let everybody know of the success that they have and how big they are and where they're going to play it's now coming to bite them in the ass poetic justice mate it's so funny you can play or not you know you know i, I don't i don't want to assume that i don't know i don't want to assume I don't, guys you can turn it off you, you can, can turn, turn it off, off. Any... yeah you could definitely turn it off if you close your eyes racism doesn't exist you could just turn it off mate like this uh, radio slave jesus christ brother Point. you can get a studio make some music and turn off all of that chat all that noise you, you... you don't <laughs> Again, mute point. We just might, might as well skip what he's saying. But then the next one, I think, in that, the other point, I think, is this further on, on 45. Let's see what he made. There, it's, 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 it's but there is another, you know, there is another little point in, in, we are now, we are now like six, seven months into this pandemic. And we know a little bit more about the virus than we did in back in March. You know, when it started back in March, uh, it, it might as well could have happened that a week later, half of the world population would have died because the virus is so heavy so uh, so i was the first one who say like stay inside lock down you know and by now we know a little bit of brave the virus. we know infection rates of different areas of different countries so i do believe that people really want to gather where humans are people who want to party you want to get together and if we don't People really want to go see Chris Liebling play again for what the millionth time, the same set. It's like, come on, man. Let's... 
Oh, I love the guy as well, but come on, man. What are you talking about, brother? Really? Like, again, this is, this is, so, it's very interesting how they view, like, this is very illuminating to view, to kind of hear how they kind of view their craft. Because for, in me and my, in my experience, being a club kid, having the ability to play for a crowd is like one of the best hobbies you could ever have or privilege, right? To maybe make a career out of that would be flipping amazing, but it would be so amazing. It's still kind of, I, I still have that kind of idea of being a fan, right? Somehow I'm that guy that was buying records at Fonica and now suddenly I'm playing at Bergheim and Paramba. I'll be like, wow, this is insane, right? I was that guy that was trolling YouTube, trying to record dig, like, Okay, amazing. Go and see my favorite DJs go and play. Like, and now suddenly I'm on a big stage of a festival. That would be so sick. But I'll still view myself as a kind of, as a fan first playing for other fans, right? Just be psyched to be there. I don't know what happens when you suddenly make the switch and you become this person. You be, you sound like an executive. Because this sounds like, this doesn't even sound, because it's interesting because they're all artists, right? But they all sound like, um, they sound like they're people that might have been in an agency or in a management group or like a record label it's very businessy orientated there's no like understanding of the emotion of the feeling of the vibe of the ambiance of the kind of um of the vibe of the room it's not reading of the room it's all kind of like this weird sort of convoluted idea that somehow they have a moral duty to go and play and restart the economy it's like are you insane people's houses are burning businesses are flipping getting looted and you think djing is the thing that's going to restart the economy that's going to get people back up where they need to go right it's going to put food on the plates of their children it's going to keep a roof over their head really really especially you guys right not even the people on the ground level who might say hey we're starting a, a, an underground illegal party somewhere where the proceeds are going to this local charity i know it's illegal but we've got this really cool altruistic kind of like holistic view and kind of idea and go on the end of it no you're just playing for yourself which is good which is fair do your thing capitalism and all that malarkey pocket the money and flying back that it's there's, there's nothing to be gained from that whatsoever as a community as a uh, or as a country and, and and for for most examples especially in italy you're actually going there when it seems to be okay and then leaving a trail of destruction as you leave but then you have nothing else to you know you're not going to go back there again until it opens up again but you've left a trail of destruction that you have no idea what kind of spike that you've caused at that time it's just insane i really will wonder what happens i guess you just become so successful that you kind of a bit detached from what happens with the people in the scene in, in general but it definitely goes to show there's definitely a disconnect between the top 20 top 50 djs and actually everybody else at large it's because they just they just they don't even sound like they understand what's going on there's no i don't know it's just very very strange slowly under controlled circumstances legally in areas where it's possible like just listen to my words in areas where it's possible like switzerland defensive allow parties people will do illegal parties and illegal parties is the worst that could happen right oh yeah definitely illegal parties is, is, is definitely worse than what you're doing 100 percent, mate let's not try and um let's not try and um what you call it uh rave shame people everything is bad illegal is bad um legal legal quote unquote is bad we don't have a vaccine we don't even know what's happening with this virus there's still reports coming out of everlasting um psychological and physiological damage that comes to people that have still recovered from it i read a story about this woman that hasn't even got a sense of smell back still so to somehow suggest that oh the parties are going to save the world. It's really ridiculous. It kind of reminds you of the designers. I like, oh, design's going to save the world. Yeah, tr really, mate. A bench is going to save the world. What are you talking about? This is absolute nonsense. If you're going to play your gig, go and play your gig and be happy. Go back home. Mute your Instagram or whatever it may be. Delete it from your phone for a week. Jump back on there and keep it moving. But to somehow suggest that everyone that's, that's kind of criticizing you has got it wrong and they need to see it your way. No, they don't. They don't, right? Most of the people that are talking about it haven't played in months. They've lost their money. They've they started a label in March. They've somehow not got a label now in bloody September. I understand, like you can definitely understand why they'd be annoyed. It's not even that hard to even kind of fathom. But for some reason, Chris Liebling is talking himself into circles and he's not really made any kind of coherent point. Again, it's really interesting. I'll leave the link down below to you to read, listen to the entire thing. But it's a very interesting um discussion again i like djs and beers i've watched quite a few of the shows but it, as it's gone on you've definitely seen the the um, you've definitely seen 
the issue people have with business techno in the terms of how they kind of look at the clubbing landscape it's definitely all business no love for the most part or again maybe it's because they've been in the game for 20 plus years it's hard to still be a quote-unquote backpack fan but i still have that love i'm sure most of the people that kind of are fans of it like i am will have the same thing too so it's very strange to see these guys be so disconnected with the kind of plight of everyone else is going through this situation at the time but again maybe i'm wrong let me know in the comments below do you think chris liebing's wiling am i wiling um should we do like radio slave and just delete everything and close our eyes mate because if you close your eyes it's not gonna happen and make music what do you reckon let me know what we should do let me know in the comments down below